Uh, well, I'm fully expecting there will have been more cases overnight and uh, we have a cut-off uh, time of 9 o'clock when all the data are put together and then I'll be briefed after that and we'll do a full update at 1 o'clock. Do you have any indication of how many more cases today we're looking at? Uh, not really at this stage, but what I would say is, interestingly in Australia, 70% of their cases in that New South Wales outbreak are from household contacts, and we are expecting results through overnight from those household contacts. This Delta variant seems to be very infectious inside, inside households, so I'm expecting there will be more cases from those people overnight. Now that it goes back to August 3, how big a mess on the contact tracing front? Oh, no mess on the contact tracing front. Yes, I was interested in that uh, 3 August uh, location of interest that's been put up. What I think has happened there is someone who's just tested positive but may have been reporting symptoms that went back and so they've been precautionary and gone right back to the 3rd of August. But just a reminder, none of our wastewater testing suggested uh, any infection out there, at least until last Wednesday. We will have further results from the wastewater testing around um, Auckland and indeed around the country that we can talk to at one o'clock as well. The contact tracing business of casinos, restaurants, supermarkets makes it more difficult with sheer numbers and we're not good contact tracers and we know that for a fact. Well, we're actually good contact tracers. We've got a really good system. If you no, sorry, I'm case. talking about I'm talking about the QR coding. We're hopeless at QR coding. Oh. If you're going to try and track people down in the supermarket in the casino, you've got trouble now. Yeah, look, uh, the QR codes are one part of the contact tracing system, and yes, people haven't been using them as well as they should have. That's why it's really important everyone keeps uh, on top of that list of. Uh, places of interest. What's particularly important, given we're an alert level four, most people will be isolating at home anyway. That's good. What's particularly important is anyone who's an essential worker, if they have been at one of those locations of interest, must not go and do their essential work. They need to stay home and follow the instructions. Some claims that there's a case or two in the South Island. What do you know? No, nothing in the South Island that we'd seen yesterday. All the cases have been in Auckland and all bar one linked. There was the case you might have seen Air New Zealand were reporting yes. last night. This is a cabin crew member who was found through routine surveillance. So probably unrelated uh, and coincidental, but we'll do the, the whole genome. So a separate, a, a separate outbreak? Uh, not so much an outbreak, but a separate positive test on a cabin crew member who was... But if they're not linked to what you've already got, they've touched other people potentially, so you've potentially got another outbreak. Uh, well, it, what it does mean is we, of course, do contact tracing of all the people who may have been in contact with that person. But at that point, they're not linked to what we're already dealing with? They're not epidemiologically linked at the moment, uh, and we will see. It, most likely, it's an unrelated coincidental find. have these amongst uh, crew members, and, of course, we do all the relevant uh, contact tracing uh, to, to check and see if anyone else may have been uh, in contact and need to, need to isolate and be tested. And the woman in her 60s, she's linked to the border. Is she linked to the others? Uh, that's the one I'm talking about. Oh, sorry, sorry. The air crew is a 60-year-old. The air crew is the person in their 60s, yes. OK, so you don't know. So she is linked to the border for obvious reasons. You don't know if she's linked to the other one at all. Will you know? Yes. And when will you know? That's, that's right. So, well, there, there will have been discussions with her to pick up the uh, any potential epidemiological link, but the whole genome sequencing, which will be done today, will give us um, confirmation of whether it's a completely uh, a separate case or whether there is some link. Okay, so it's likely she, it's just it's just an incidental separate sure. case. If she's not linked to the group, you're still no closer to linking the group to the border. Uh, well, overnight we will have had uh, not just a case, any new cases come in, but of course um, additional whole genome sequencing, and uh, we'll see what that's showing us in terms of the picture that's emerging around both the source investigation, you know, where did this case come from and this outbreak come from, but also what's happening to it in the community. Is it possible it's a cold all over again? We'll never know. Uh, well, one of the things is we've got, I think, better at um, using the whole genome sequencing data. And also we do know already that it links quite closely to some of the genomes in New South Wales. And, and there's only a limited number of people who have come back from New South Wales over the last two or three weeks. Uh, I mean, it's several thousand, of course, that have come in, but particularly in that week after the bubble was closed. Uh, but uh, we, it, we do have the opportunity to go back and have a really good look and see where that um, breach might have occurred. What do you say to the police, the supermarket workers who haven't been prioritised in a way that they would have liked, jab-wise? Yeah, well, look, um, a, a, a pretty good proportion of police have already been vaccinated. I uh, had a text conversation yesterday with the Commissioner of Police and part of our rollout, uh, rollout and restarting of the vaccination programme over the next few days is designed to prioritise um, police and indeed supermarket and other essential workers as well. So there will be an opportunity for them to Why be Why didn't vaccinated. you do it earlier? 
Well, those who were part of groups uh, one, two and three were able to be vaccinated. And, and as you know, we're rolling down through group four pretty quickly. Uh, no, we're not. Uh, why didn't you do it earlier? Well, uh, the, the government Is it made supply? a supply. You didn't have the supply? Be- no, there was a decision about which groups were the priority groups under Group 2 and the focus was on healthcare workers and a number of other um, essential workers. And as, as I said, uh, it were, uh, vaccination was and continues to roll out into the police and we will be seeing how we can escalate that over coming days as well. We had Chris Smith on earlier, the virologist out of Cambridge. He says zero COVID is a forlorn hope. Why do you think it's not? Well, for the meantime, uh, we have shown that we can eliminate uh, COVID out of the community. Well, not with Delta. And, and, well, that's what we're working on right now. And other places have been able to do that. And and we think... Uh, Who's been able to eliminate quickly. Delta? Well, we've seen uh, several outbreaks in different states in Australia where they have, by acting early, been able to uh, get on... So onto like Northern outbreaks. Territory, you're saying? Northern Territory, Queensland at the moment has got around the most recent outbreak it had. Uh, we saw Taiwan as a jurisdiction a couple of months ago with a, 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 a quite an extensive outbreak has got that uh, got that back under control. You don't regret now still with Delta having told us all year that we didn't need to worry because we don't have Delta. Now that we've got it, you should have rolled this thing out faster. Uh, I never said that we didn't have to worry, um, and I'll, I'll stand stand on that. Uh, we all right, we didn't to need to be working. any quicker than we were. You were happy with the speed we were rolling out a vaccine because we, quote unquote, didn't have COVID. The, the the reason we were rolling it out at the speed we did, of course, was that we went for a Pfizer-based program. I think that was a good decision. It's a very good vaccine. We knew that most of the vaccine would arrive in the second half of the year. Now that it is, as you can see, we're rolling out at pace and going down through the age groups. And you were happy for we it to arrive in the second part of the year because we, quote unquote, didn't have COVID. And yet now we do. It's out of control. And we're not running out a vaccine program that would have solved our problem and prevented yeah, us from being in lockdown. It's six months nearly since we had our last community case because of a lot of hard work and we've got a lot of hard work happening now to get around this outbreak. So um, we'll focus on that and, of course, continuing to vaccinate as fast as we can. So no regrets? Uh, No regrets. We're doing the best job we can and there's a whole lot of people who have been and continue to work very hard to keep New Zealanders safe and uh, what I'm asking is New Zealanders to to do their bit as we control this outbreak and, of course, get out and get vaccinated as well. Just for clarity. And thank you, Mike, for you doing it. Well, I've already done it, unlike you, who hasn't, and we are the same age. We are. Well, actually, I'm looking at a year younger than you. Yeah, I'm booked in for this Sunday, actually. I've been working with my team about some sort of event, but... In the end, I, I got on the... You should, you, uh, should have, as, you should have, as a community leader, been jabbed first up. You set the precedent. Why wouldn't you do that? I was actually waiting my turn, and uh, my age group's only recently become, um, you know, uh, eligible. I'm in group four. I don't have any pre-existing conditions. I was waiting my turn. I, I uh, beat you to it. I'm, Ama- amazing, group. isn't it, that a guy can beat the Director General of Health to it on the same set of circumstances when the program opens up? Yep, great, great leadership there, Mike. No, I'm very pleased you got vaccinated, and I'll be, I'll be following in your footsteps. Not Have, having said that, can just for cl- for clarity, and Stuart Nash said this on the program yesterday. He seemed to suggest that if even 80% of us had been vaccinated, double jabbed, given what had happened with Delta, you would still lock us down. Is that fair or not? Well, at the moment, and this was what came out in the the, uh, the seminar last week, and you'll have heard Professor Skeg talk about this. At the moment, we know the modelling shows even with 80% coverage, uh, Delta can still get away. We're still committed to an elimination strategy because we have a an important part of our population that is not yet protected, our children. And the evidence is not yet in. It will come in, and then there will be a decision about, of course, opening up the vaccination programme to children. Appreciate your time. Ashley Bloomfield, Director General of Health,